Working on this Malibu here for life of the Ikes. You know what I'm saying? We're getting them right, y'all. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. We stay tuned and forward now. Well, I'm finally getting to life with the Ikes 79 Chevy Malibu. I know it's been a minute since I did the introduction to the Malibu. But we finally finna get to the body work. I've been out here trying to figure out a plan for it. I've been going around trying to see what all I gotta address. And I just really haven't had a plan because there's so much stuff that i seen that I got to address before I actually start seeing some progress, such as this uh, deck lid. You can see it's lifted up there. It's not sitting down like it should. But I got another deck lid, but I started looking at it, and I'm thinking about using two, making one good one. Because this deck lid pretty good for us to rust. It's just, hold up, let me pop this deck lid right quick and show you. It's split on both sides right here, up in there as well. So I'm thinking about cutting this out and using it, welding it onto the good one. So I ain't got to worry about all this rust because it's a lot of rust on this one here. So that'll be a lot easier doing that. Plus, we got a little rust back here I got to clean off. Sand down. I'm thinking about starting in the back and working my way to the front because the front got some issues as well. We got some dings and dents all through here. I gotta clean this up. The way he cut, we got some 24s going on here, so he had to cut this, knock this up, so I'm cleaning it up. I don't know if you'll be able to see these dings and dents right here. And I gotta line the doors up. The whole front need to be lined up from the door all the way to the front. Like the fender, you can see the fender, the gap down here a lot smaller than it is up here. So I'm thinking it's the core support bushings. I need to lift it up. And this hood, it's just not, I don't know what's wrong with this hood. Maybe y'all can tell me in the coming six. Let me see if I could drop it down. See, that's as far as it's gonna go. But it's not, you see how that gap is there? It's a lot smaller than here on both sides so I'm not real sure what they did with this hood but we got a brand new one coming in a cow hood two inch so maybe that'll solve the problem now but I still got to take all the doors off and the fenders off just to line it up because you got to start back here with this gap and work your way to the front but we got a lot of dings and dents here now this got to be addressed and I seen right here it's split, so I'm gonna have to weld that back together. Address this area here. Then this been cut. Got some more rust spots here. Eight through. And on the other side, let me show you the other. The front clip look pretty good. But this side here, you see it's split. It's bent up right there. Also, these doors. Let's see if I can open them. These doors need welded as well. It's split right here, right there. The other side a lot worse than this side. This side here still kind of got some strength to it, but it's still split. Let me take that to the other side right quick. Also gonna be doing some power door locks. Not the door locks, but power windows. But you can see what I was talking about right here, split. You can see how they got that give. So I gotta wear this, all this back. Well, 
guess we'll start back on this deck lid. I remove this from here and mark my area what I'm gonna cut out. Probably cut it out from here. Up in there. The hardest part is getting started. Once you get started, everything else, you know, go from there. That's all we can do. All right. Now you can see it a lot better. What was what I was talking about? How it split. And eight up in there. Split there. Eight up in there as well. So I guess we're gonna find our spot. We're gonna cut this out, mark it, and transfer it over to here. Now what I do on this bottom, I think I'm just gonna cut it straight down. Probably bring it straight up here. And right here, Probably come straight down there. And over here. Let me see. I probably do it like this. I think that ought to be good there. Then I'll take my cut off wheel, cut it on off. All right, we got that cut out. As you can see, I gotta clean up the back side up. This is surface rust. But now, I cut this out on the panel that I'll be using so it won't interfere with me mounting it because it's kinda pushed back some, so I'm gonna cut all this out on both sides. Somewhere else, let me see, uh, see if you can see it. Pretty much like that there. Here we go. This is the piece I cut off. This the piece gonna go back on. I just gotta clean it up. I'm gonna clean the back side up first and put some weld through prime on it. But I gotta cut the other side off. Here we go. I got both sides cut off. This is what I use to cut it off. I use the cut off wheel and a biter saw. I use both of them. And this is what I'm gonna use to clean it up with. And also this drill with a wire brush on it, wire wheel. I'm gonna clean the inside up with this. So now I'm gonna put this plate, I'm gonna put this on somewhere where it need to be, then I take my sharpie and mark out around it so I know exactly where to clean it up at. That should be good right there. Take my sharpie. I gotta grind all this down to bright metal so I have something to weld too. Now I take my 
right angle ground. up i'm gonna do the same thing well i'm gonna i'm gonna take all this down to brown metal especially with this rust at this would look like so far for us to clean up i'm gonna take some rust mort rust converter and brush it on the back side of this here so everything else good it's good to go as you can tell Got a chip brush with them brush the rust mold on with. I'm gonna pour some in this cap. Don't take much. This stuff go a long way. You can see it's somewhat greenish. But when you wipe it on, it's gonna turn, it's gonna turn the rust black. Let it sit. Once it's dry, I'm going to spray some wear through primer on it as well. While I'm letting this here sit up, I might as well jump over here and be doing something. Cleaning this surface rust here up. I'm gonna use the uh, brush on the drill. I got that cleaned up with the wire brush on the drill. Now I'm gonna wipe some rust mold on it. I'm also working on, I got to get these uh, these screws here out that was rusted in and round it off. I'm going to take a, a, a cut off wheel and I'm going to put a split in it try to get it off with a flathead. Then I got this to go over it. I got to cut these nipples off because he's not going back with a top. I think this is for a Landau, a Malibu Landau with a top on it. He's not going with a top, so I'm gonna have to cut these off and do some body work on it. Hand me that screwdriver, bro. I'm gonna try to turn it now. Um. It's turning. Yeah, I think it's going to work. Come off though. It's almost off, y'all. Y'all got a bread with me. Might gotta cut y'all off because I don't want y'all to 
I don't want to bore y'all with taking this off. But it's almost off though. I think I got it now. Y'all see? I just got to get some more screws. We'll be good. Now I grind these nipples off and go from there. All the nipples cut off, and now I take my belt sander, knock it down below the surface. Gotta plug it up first. Good to go. All the nipple shade. Now I clean up the rest of the surface. You can see this pretty pivot on the back side. Where I got it cleaned up. Now I'm gonna put some rust mold on it. Same way I did this here. Y'all can see it's turning black now. Here's the Weld Through Primer by USC. I'm knocking down all my high areas because I came back and put some fiberglass fill on it after I had welded it around the seam just to make the transition a lot smoother. I already did this side and also I had some left over so I had put some right here because I had to do some body work right here because it was sticking up too high so I had to knock this down. But the rest of it I'm going to put regular body filler. I'm going to wipe the skim coat on this whole top piece. Also, I'm going to put some around here. Let me blow it off so you can see it. This is the fiberglass fill I had used, dirt glass. This is the body fill I'll be using. Here's the body filler. This here already dry, but before I start sanding this, I had took my sharpie, came over here. I'm finding the dings and dents that I see. I've been marking them. We got a few push shots here. I put some peas there so I know to knock them in before I fill it. Some push shots there, also here. That's weird. Seemed like something was in the trunk. Maybe they had some music because on both sides it's like this. So, this here need to be knocked down. Like I said, I probably just do from here back for now. So push shots there. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take my body hammer, I'm gonna knock these push shots in. Then I feel, I sand these with some uh, 80 grit. Then I feel those areas. I do that before I start sanding on the dig lid.
early in the morning, back out here. I had wiped this last night. It's the other side, I'll show you. I also put some fiberglass filler around here. I trimmed this out some. Got it a little smoother. And I, I just found two dents up here on the hood. Well, not the hood, but the roof that I see so far. One here. Also one that I already unsanded it. The wipe some uh, filler on it. And it's a scrape here. I got a feel. And I'll probably just go ahead and take this quarter glass out because you can see it's rust forming up here. In order to be able to clean it and get paint up under here real good, I have to take this glass out to remove this quarter glass trim. He already got a new one ordered, so that ain't gonna be no problem. So I'll probably do that. And I got the deck lid over here. I already sanded the dings and dents that I found. Also the lock, it was beat up, so I tried to straighten it out so the lock would be able to go in there. But I guess I'll wipe the fill on these uh, spots here and take that quarter glass out. Filler dry. Now before I start blocking by hand, I'm gonna take my DA with some 80 grit and lightly go across the surface up, knock the top layer off, and make your blocking goes a lot faster. There y'all have it. Hip and hand around. Y'all tell them what's going on. What it is. Man, we're working on this Malibu here for life of the Ikes. You know what I'm saying? We're getting them right, y'all. Y'all see it. Y'all see it. We stay tuned and forward now. Let me show you this quarter of glass. You can see it has some rust forming now. Also, this back is pitted. It's kind of ate out in some areas. Let me take it on the inside and show you. Here's the window sweeps. See it's eight out here. So I'm gonna have to clean this rust up here and repair that area. 
it's kind of rusted here, but it's not ate out, so I clean that up as well. Same way with this side. You can see the hole. That's where the water just sit. But I'm gonna clean it up and repair it for them. It's kind of ate out back there too. I done cleaned it up, treated it with the rust mort. It was also pitted right here as well. You can see it's somewhat cracked from here over. Well, it started raining on my side, so I had to bring it on the inside. I wasn't gonna let it slow me down. But you can see I got my body filler knocked down. I had to go back and fill a few spots because I seen it was low. That's why it's a different color. But it's time to start blocking. But before we block, we're going to put a guide coat on it. I usually use a flat black spray paint or a dry guide coat. But since this panel here is black, it's going to be kind of hard to tell what's what when you start blocking. So I'm going to use some a different color. You can use pretty much any color, but I'm going to use this here. I like to use flat because it's easier to come off than gloss or satin. But I'm going to lightly spray some, some of this maroon on there and block it. Once the guide coat dry, you want to grab you some blocks. I got two different sizes here. You want to use a bigger block on the bigger areas like this here. It covers the complete area. Also a smaller block you can use on smaller areas. But you really don't want to use this block on an area that's bigger than a block. Now on the curved and the rounded areas, I'm using the rounded block. I already started over here. Like this block here is rounded because this panel here ain't extra flat. It goes in like a slope. So I don't want to square that off. Let me show you over here. You're just removing the guide coat. If you still see some guide coat, that mean the area there low. like this area here it's low still low so I got to keep bringing this down once all the guide coat is removed you're good to go block I forgot to mention what grit I was using I'm using 80 grit to start off with and I also jumped over here started smoothing this down what I welded I'm gonna prime this area here once I'm just gonna put a heavy coat of prime on it and I got to be too smooth but I'm gonna go back over this with 180 knock them 80 grit scratches down so I gotta try to feel them 80 grit scratches Y'all tell me what y'all think about it so far. Just finished up with the blocking. You can see I scuffed up the whole entire area because when I spot prime, there's going to be some primer, so over spray getting over here, so I wanted to have something to bond to. That's what I'd be doing from the jump, spot priming. I'm not going to prime the whole entire deck lid right now. I'm going to concentrate on the repairs. I'm going to prime the back side as well. These to end caps, I'll be priming those. And this here, on the, on the back side of that. I guess I'll concentrate on the back half of the car tomorrow. Hopefully it'll stop raining. Let me mix this prime. <laughs>
here's the results of the primer, spot prime. Now you can see the imperfections, especially on this piece here. Right here. Along that edge, also up in here. I feel those areas there was some glazing put in before I start blocking this here. Well, sanding that. Then we'll get the back half of the car up to this point. Then we'll go from there. Here's the glazing putter. It's a two part. It's the U-Paw liquid gold. It was awesome. It was some pinholes on this piece here. You can see I wiped it on the back side. Let me show you on the other side. You'll see the pinholes. You see where it's coming through. So when I sand it, it'll be flush. All right, I'm put the guide coat on it. Now I'll spray some guide coat on this. Well, there's a friend that sticks closer than any brother. <laughs> these parts here these are good to go for the final prime I sanded these with 180 also this now we'll go outside pick up where we left off at all right here we go I'm not sure where I left off but I just wiped the car down and I found three more spots up here that I need to dress put some body fill in the spot here it's a streak here and one there but the rest of it seemed fine once I wiped it down and it was somewhat glossy I could see the dings and dents but I think the last time I showed you I was working on the inside of here you can see I done repaired that also this side that side as well Let me take it to this door jam over here. So I repaired the door jam as well. Once I wipe them areas up there, I'm gonna spray a guide coat on it. Then we'll start blocking it. I went ahead and blocked the whole side here. I'm gonna do the other side as well. But I found some spots that I need to address. So I got some tape on the areas I need to address. Address this area here low. And uh, top pretty much good, except right here, it's low. I got some areas down here as well. This here is low. And back here, Got quite a few areas. Some of these areas high. That's how I need to be knocked in. High, high, low, high, and high. Then I got an area here. It's high. The reason why I know it's high because I done got down to the brown metal right there. And 
got some errors right here I need to address. But I just wanted to give you an update on it. It's coming along. We're well, ready to shoot some primer now. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna spot prime the repairs first. Then I'm gonna prime the rest of it. I'm gonna do it outside. I'm trying to beat the dark. I'm gonna go ahead and mix up this primer. following day I'm about to spray a gag coat on it get ready to start blocking it once it dry 
trying to decide what color I'm going to use. See, if I use black, it'll be somewhat confusion. Because the primer that was on it is black. So once I cut down, it's going to be hard to tell what's low and what's not. So I'm going to try to use another color if I can find another color. I got some gray, but it's pretty much going to be the same. I think I done ran out of that maroon. But I'm going to put some guide coat on it. We'll start blocking it. I barely had enough of the maroon spray paint, but I got it covered. Now we're gonna remove this um, 80 grit that we got on the blocks. We're gonna put some 180 on it. What the 180 gonna do is gonna get the 80 grit scratches out. It's gonna give it a smoother finish. Plus we're gonna find all our spots, low areas that we miss. Hopefully we didn't miss none. Okay, we're gonna use our longer block on this area back here. And this is where we're gonna start at because this is where most of the butter work was on both sides. Like I said before, the only thing we're doing is removing the guide coat. <clears throat> if some guide coat still seen, that means that area that low. And if you start seeing metal, that means that area high. And if you start hitting metal, you're gonna have to stop and knock the metal in because you can't block no further once you start hitting metal. Stop it right there so I can show you some low areas. See that area that low? You still see the guide coat. This area here was high. But I'm not hitting no metal so I can bring it down some more. As long as you don't start hitting metal, you can continue blocking it out. this side here block down from here down let me show you the areas that I found I got a low area there I need to feel I think that's it over here back here I got a low area also got a low area there this a high area this low so I'm gonna have to knock this down. I'm gonna take my body hammer and the dollar, knock it down. Then once I knock this down, I should be able to get to this. I think that's it. I started hitting metal there, but I think all this here pretty much smooth. You can see a little guy coat there, so I might knock this down as well. Once I knock these ass down, I'm gonna take some of this glaze and put it two part. Wipe a skim coat in it. And continue. I'm gonna take my dolly, put it on the back side. I'm gonna take the point of this hammer and tap around the edge of it. Side of it a little bit. That should be good enough right there. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. Two 
some pork glaze and put it. A little bit right here. Pretty much all you guys do. Ready for the final prime now. As y'all can see. I'm gonna spot prime this as well, like I did before. Put probably two coats, then I prime the rest of it. On both sides. This top blocked out good. I didn't find no spots, I had to go back and touch up. Take the deck lid and go out and install it on the car. I'll probably just sit these end caps up against it. I ain't gonna put them down yet, just yet. This too.
finished the results. I had went to the yard and got some original bolts. But this is what she came out looking like. See the repair. Y'all think about it. Both sides. I just got this sitting up. It's not bolted down and that. I just got it sitting up. These here, we got mounted on. Let me shake this deck lid. So I'll think about it. Pretty much halfway with the body work now. I just gotta do the doors and the fenders and the front clip. I got a new hood. Take it to the other side. See if I can get you a shot of this repair in here. See that repair there? And this one. Y'all stay tuned for the rest of the battle work. for life of the Ikes, you know what I'm saying? We're getting them right, y'all. Y'all see it, y'all see it. We stay tuned and forward now. Nobody really gave a damn about us. We never stopped. Right from the bottom to the top, from the